Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to get a couple big ponderosa pines milled into one by six for you. And this is a, uh, you know, <laughs> this is the Woodmiser LT40 portable sawmill in action. You know, if you like watching sawmill videos and you enjoy seeing what it takes to take these raw logs and turn them into lumber, this is the video for you. We are going to knock down two good sized ponderosa pines into a one by six knotty pine paneling. Now, of course, after the wood's dried, which is gonna take about eight to 10 weeks, then it's gonna to have to be planed and edged and turned into tongue and groove. But that's all part of the process that happens after we get these logs milled up. So, of course, the first thing we gotta do after we get the log on the deck is just center the pit. Make sure the log's clean, no rocks in it or anything like that, and then we just get going. And you'll notice <laughs> my sawdust chute was plugged up. Don't worry, we'll take care of that here in a little bit. You'll see that. And there's some other things that are going to go on in this video. One in particular that I think for anybody that does any sawing or for anyone that kind of wonders about squaring up logs and how we do that. Well, I'm going to show you what happens when a log doesn't sit right on the deck and you're not cutting it square and how you fix that. So stick around for that. It'll be a little bit later in this video. In the meantime, we're gonna make a whole lot more sawdust and you can see a big pile of sawdust right there. Isn't that crazy? We milled a lot of lumber this weekend. You can see also a big slab pile. Occasionally you'll kind of see that and all that lumber sitting there. Um, you know, we milled a lot of lumber, about 5,000 board feet. And it was really in about two days worth of milling. I milled uh, about an hour, and a half or so on the first day when I arrived and then put in about five hours on day two because we had the fill filter go bad and if you haven't seen that video I'll put that at the end for you so you can check that one out or down in the comments below once we got the mill fixed of course we did a little bit of milling at the end of that day and then this is the third day and final day of milling and if you've seen a couple of these videos already then you're on track if you haven't go back and check out a couple of the other ones here prior to this one because it really shows you some of these big ponderosa pines that we were milling into paneling and of course i made some mistakes in those and you know what when i make mistakes i let you know but this video mistake free <laughs> all right we're gonna get this done we're gonna have to do a blade change in here and we're going to get these logs knocked into paneling for you. So let's sit back, let's watch things run for a little while, and then I'm going to point out some things that I had to do when I discovered that I was not milling a square log. Now that's the second log in this series. Let's let this one go, and then I'll come back to you on that one, and I'll explain to you what's going on.
Once we got that milled down enough that we could get these flitches up, look at how big those flitches were. They were over 12 inches. Those are big slabs. This customer didn't really want a whole lot of live edge, so we're gonna edge these down into one by sixes. And of course, I always do that up against a cant or a couple boards that are up against the side supports. It just makes it more stable and allows you to get them nice and straight up and down so that you can edge them out. Once you take the tops off and you got them nice and flat, then you just flip them all over, get them into position again, mill them down some more. One thing about milling flitches is you always kind of have to watch when you get out near the end because they tend to fall off on both sides and it can fall off and get in the way of the mill when you try to draw it back. So you just kind of pay attention. And in this one here, since I'd already flattened the other side, I flattened the top at 12 and an eighth, then I can just drop the head to six inches, mill them right in half, and that gives you a bunch of one by six. Once we get those done, then all we gotta do is get these cants put into position again to knock them all the way down. So we're gonna take care of that. So as soon as these guys get the rest of that lumber out of the way, <laughs> I'm gonna clean that sawdust chute. You know, these things get plugged up, that's just the way it goes, and I tend to just keep milling until I get to a good stopping point. For me, it's really all about production. I wanna to try to get as much produced as I can in the shortest period of time while producing quality lumber. So yeah, if the sawdust chute's plugged up, it isn't a good thing, but on the other hand, I can keep milling for a little while. Now look at how close that sawdust chute is to the sawdust pile. We're just building it up, and I'm going to have to kick some out of the way here in a bit. <laughs> That's a lot of sawdust. So we're going to get this log off the deck, and then we're going to get another one loaded up. So let's let that happen. Alright, get this log loaded up on the deck and one of the things that can happen with these bigger logs and you can see that this log is over 24 inches in diameter and if you haven't heard me say it before those two side supports that are upright there on the log those are almost 12 inches tall so that gives you a pretty good idea of how big this log is now it's not the biggest log I've ever milled and it's not very long but it's still a good sized log. So, and right there, you saw the customer's help cleaning off some dirt at the end of the log. That's something you always want to try to do because you really don't want the band running into dirt as soon as it enters the log. So, you know, just rubbing it off, getting the dirt out of the way is a good idea. It'll help save the band. Now, once we get this log positioned, we're gonna start milling it down. And you know, since I don't have a laser yet, <laughs> that's coming. I always check the center, get an average from both ends, and that way I know where to make my starting cut. Now, with big logs like this, one of the challenges with rolling it, whether you roll at 90 or whether you roll at 180, is that when you go to roll it so that the flat opening face is against the side supports, it doesn't always sit perfectly. Normally, it's not an issue, but on bigger logs, sometimes you just don't see that it's not sitting quite right. Now, if you've milled as much as I have, and I've been running a bandsaw mill since early 2011, I was chainsaw milling before that, but you know, if you've run one of these mills as long as I have, you kind of get to the point where you can see whether things aren't quite right. And if you look at the log there, 
it looks like it's flat against those side supports. However, you're going to see that it really wasn't. So I'm going to let this run for a little bit, and then I'll show you what I had to do to fix it. All right, as I rolled this log over and I pushed it up against those side supports, I noticed right away that it was not sitting flat to the side supports. That means that I did not have a good 90 degree first two cuts. They need to be 90 degrees to each other. And since they weren't, what I've got to do now is roll the log all the way back around, get it flat up against the side supports, and then I bring the saw head in, set it on top of the log so that the downward teeth are just barely touching the log, grab my carpenter square, and check the square, and then verify it with the band itself. Since the band was sitting on the log, I can see whether or not the log itself was on a bit of an angle, so it'll be touching on one end and not the other. So I make a cut, check it again with the square, and if I'm not happy with it, then I've got to kind of wiggle the log around a little bit and get it into that position that I need. And you can kind of see there that you can see the top of the log a little more than normally you do on these shots here. That's because I've kicked it up a little bit on the far side. I want to make sure that when I make this cut, I've got a nice square cut to the other face. So I checked it against the band. And now as I'm cutting down the log, I just grab my carpenter square and I just lift up that little bit that I'm cutting off the top it's a little bit of a wedge cut check it with the carpenter square it's perfect so I know now I'm good to go and I can roll the log 90 again and continue to build my cant and that's just one of the things that can happen sometimes and as long as you know how to go in and set the band on the log and check it with the carpenter square and wiggle the log around a little bit so that you can get your angle just right so that when you make that wedge cut, you're back to 90 degrees, you're good to go. Doesn't take very long, but it's something that you just got to know that sometimes you have to do. All right, we're going to get this one knocked down, so I'm going to let it run a little bit, and then I'm going to come back to you and talk to you a little bit more about what's going on. And again, this is just sawmills in action, folks. checking the top of the log it kind of feels like maybe we're not cutting right so I just run my hand across it, across it and sure enough it just wasn't cutting perfectly flat when you walk beside the log the way I do with this mill you can really see what's going on as you're cutting down the log so of course you're looking at the previous cut but if it's not perfectly flat it's time to change the band out Woodmiser says, regardless of the band or the mill, these bands are really only designed to run about two hours. It's two hours in the wood and they get hot, they start to lose their sharpness and it's a good idea to swap them out. So that's what I generally do. And a friend of mine on Forest Reform that goes by Crossroads, Kevin is his name, He's another sawyer out here. He started sawing about the same time I did, but actually saws pretty much full time. So I think he's hitting the million board foot club now. And one of the things that I had asked a while back in one of my videos was whether or not anyone tightens the band with the band running. I had thought that Woodmiser had said shut the band down, then tighten it up. Turns out a lot of sawyers do that. So, you know, this old jarhead can learn new tricks. And I did from Kevin and some others. It, you know what? That's just kind of standard operating procedure. So a lot of times now you'll see me with the band running, tightening things up. Another thing you'll see in these videos, this customer was awesome. He really understood what was going on. He picked it up very quickly. And sometimes he jumps in and tightens that up for me. So anyway, there we go. We're going to split this can into two six inch cans and then we'll flip it up 90 degrees and we'll start knocking down the one by sixes. 
One of the things I want you to notice in this is that I do not split the pith. Now, have I ever split the pith? Sure I have. I've talked about that in previous videos. It's certainly not intentional. You really always want to try to box in the heart in one piece of lumber whenever possible. Doing that puts the most inferior wood into one piece. So you're going to see here that as I'm milling down, I don't split the pith. I box it in. Let's let it run. This is going to speed up a little bit for you, so let's let it happen. <laughs> These guys, they were awesome. You know, I've, I've kind of pointed that out in several videos on this right here. Oh, right there. Look at that. Boom. Box in the heart. They were really awesome. One would pull lumber off the back side. The, one, the other would pull lumber off the front side so that I really never had to slow down. If you ever want to show customers on how off bearing works, these guys got it down. They were awesome at it. We made a lot of lumber. All right, we're getting this down now. All we got to do is mill up these flitches so we can finish this log off. So we're going to get these flitches stacked up on the deck. And again, a flitch is just a board that has wane on either side or both sides. You want to edge that down. You can edge it down on your sawmill. There are actually edgers made by Woodmiser and other companies that you can actually do that with for more high production environments. For me, I can't tow an edger at the same time I tow the sawmill. So I just edge everything down on the sawmill. That produces a little more lumber than a lot of other mills. You know, one of the things about these bandsaw mills is they have a very thin kerf. And the kerf is the thickness of the blade or the band. In this case, they're about an eighth of an inch, a little bit less actually. And since scales are designed for thicker blades, like, the, like a quarter inch blade, log scaling is based on that so if you think about an international quarter scale it's designed for that quarter inch kerf and you might not think that makes much of a difference but it actually really does every cut i'm an eighth of an inch less than the circle mills are that means that in eight cuts i lose an inch they lose two inches that's one more board i'm going to get out of a log for every eight cuts that i do compared to the circle mills so that's how you get more out of a log with a bandsaw mill. That and edging while you go. Now, I flip these cans over because I want to make sure that I'm kind of working them down from both sides. Sometimes I don't do that, but if I think there's a little bit of stress or maybe there's a little wane that I want to get rid of on one side or the other, I'm going to flip them over. Now, it's pretty common practice. If you've got a little bit of stress in the log, you're going to see it react as you mill off the tension fibers or the tension wood so by flipping it over 180 degrees skimming off the top and then milling her down you can, you can take care of that get rid of that issue all right folks well we're getting it down now getting these last cuts get this last wood off the deck and then we'll be ready to mill another one you can see i've got one sitting right there so the next video we'll finish this job up i think thanks for watching folks i really appreciate it if you haven't hit subscribe or shared this video do me a favor do it for me i would really love it if you did everybody have a great weekend the old jarhead out